G'day guys, and welcome to G-Man Specs. Today, we're talking about women warning other women of dating red flags and what to look out for from men, right? They're gonna warn them about what monster hunters get up to. So without further ado, guys, grab a drink. Let's have a laugh at him, it's hilarious. What the fuck is this thing even? Ladies, here's a huge red flag in dating that you need to be Aussie so bird. careful of. Men by nature are afraid of commitment. They don't want to commit. They don't want to be tied down. The idea of being suffocated by a woman scares the crap out of them. So if you So this woman here, absolutely what guy would want to commit to a woman like this with fuck, I don't even know what is on her face, guys. I'm not making fun of her. Like she'd probably be attractive if she didn't have all this shit on her face because she's probably got the she's got the bones there, right? She's got the you know, the, the, she could be nice if she had a natural look, but she's covered in paint. Um, and she looks scary and she's got gems and shit on her eyes and all that sort of stuff But no, it isn't that men don't want to be have commitment. Most men most men do want to have a commitment It's the guys that you're chasing Guys that I formerly was as well We don't want commitment with anybody because we've dealt with lots of women and we know what we're going to get at the end of it Right, there are a lot of other guys out there who are quite naive or they're very idealistic about What they're going to get if they you know commit and support women do all the right things Oh, they're, they're about 90% of the men out there, but they're not the ones that you want, right? All those guys do want to commit. But anyway, the guys you're saying are emotionally uh, unavailable or whatever and don't want to commit and be suffocated, yeah, they're the kinds of guys who know what's up. And especially with a woman like this, walking red flag just the way she looks. You've been dating a guy for one week, two weeks, you barely know the guy. And all of a sudden he's like, hey babe, I think uh, I think we should get married and uh, settle down and yeah, you're everything to me. I've never felt this way in my life. Huge red flag. Why? I knew this girl, okay? She things. met this guy within two weeks. I love you, I've never felt this way. Um, you're everything, I wanna get married. He made this girl completely fall for him. A month later, he's like, oh babe, uh, I've got nowhere to live. Um, I'm just like, uh, I need somewhere to stay just for now, just till I, um, I'm in between jobs, da 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 da. The girl's already in love by this point. She thinks she's found the one. Poor girl lets the guy move in. Cut a long story short, she ends up finding out this guy already has a whole other girlfriend. <laughs> Been the whole time and his girlfriend lived with her parents so he couldn't move in with the girlfriend all he needed was a place to stay so if a guy very early on is telling you things like i love you i want to be with you that is a huge red flag it means he either wants to sleep with you he's telling you everything you want yeah, to hear yeah. because he needs something from you no. so ladies don't believe him words don't mean a thing that's true that's true no so i think she's she's true there but she's also telling on herself and about i know our friends and the kind of dickheads that they're letting into their life now whether they or not that story is true she couldn't really give details it just sounded like she was uh, trying to think of something funny or something to say but if you can't work out that the guy you're with is an absolute fucking deadbeat with a whole other girlfriend and stuff pretty quickly like there'll be absolute tales about that sort of thing like a guy can't keep that up for too long then that's on you. That's on you for being stupid, right? Have I ever told women I love them and things like that within the first two weeks? I've never done that at all, guys. Like, like she's saying that men want things from women. The only thing that men want from women is sex, right? Yeah, you might get some guys out there who are the like the Tinder swindler guy or whatever, but really, how many of the percentage of men's that? Like zero 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 one percent, fraction of that, right? Women don't have anything that men want apart from their bodies apart from their vajayjays right like so all she's saying really is all her and all her friends get lied to by chads and other monster hunters for sex and that's really all they're worth anyway but these women who put up these red flag videos they tell on themselves because they want to put a psa out to other women because they've done this thing so many times with men they need to warn them about what they're experiencing and I think it's like a little bit noble, fine. They're trying to warn other women, but they tell on themselves like every time they do this sort of thing. It's fantastic. I love it, guys. And I, I, I like I like laughing. I just like laughing about some of the shit that guys do to get in with women and, and you know, monster hunters, what they'll do and what they'll say and say they love. That's why I was laughing before. I think it's funny. Like, I've never done that. But God, uh, it's a wild west out there, boys. Here we go. Here's another one that's straight in the pump and dump category guy on a dating app and he does any of these three things before you meet him red flags honey and don't say i didn't tell you okay number one is asking for your instagram and not your phone number i understand 
understand that sometimes people want to screen you through social media and make sure you're normal. But let's be real. If someone is serious about meeting up with you, they're going to get your phone number and they're going to lock down a date. They're not going to try to add an extra buffer in between you and them, which in this case would be social media. So if they're asking for your Instagram, honestly, red flag. Number two. I don't think it is. Like when I was out there dating and I had an Instagram, I don't have all those things anymore, guys. The only social media I have is this YouTube, I guess, if you want to call it that. I never once or very rarely had women straight up give me their phone numbers. Like I'd ask for them. I would actually want their phone numbers and to give them my phone number because I found that was the quickest way home to get them on the phone and start working my magic. Start building a rapport by chatting with them on the phone. But they wanted to get Instagrams. They wanted to go through my Facebook. They always ask me for Facebook and all those things. So I'm going to have to say this is a more a girl thing than a guy thing. I, I've never really asked for Instagram um, without talking to them first or whatever. Generally, it's on their profile. It's linked. They have it all there. They've got photos of them fucking wearing next to nothing on there. Right? It's. I don't think it's the guys doing that. But, hey, it could happen. But, like, I've never experienced that. So it's just just telling on herself. Ew. If they're facilitating a date but it's a group situation. Listen, I understand some people are into this. I kind of feel like someone who wants to impress you is going to want your undivided Never attention heard of that. and Never group heard of that. dynamics where you just roll by are usually very casual and they set the tone for just that, a casual relationship. And red flag number 3, ca who's ever Right, mate, you guys tell me in the comments, who's ever lined up, tried to light up a date with a chick and bring your mates along or something? That's what girls do. They try and bring their friends. I had this chick I was talking to and I was, um, I wasn't saying I was dating or anything. I didn't met her yet, right? We'd spoken on the phone and all this. And then she's like, oh, I'm going to bring my girlfriend to dinner with us and all this. I said, I'm not, you can fucking bring her. I said, I'm not fucking paying for it. I'm not paying for you guys. I'm just letting you know. That idea went away pretty fucking quick because they're going to push that boundary to see if some dickhead on the app will take them out and spend money on them. Because I, I, I'm sure that, that wasn't the first time they tried that fucking double act, right? <laughs> what guy does that? I've never done it, never heard of it. You, as men, we want to, as predatory as it sounds, you want to isolate him. You want to get him by themselves. So you can try and get some action out of him, right? Not, not fucking have six friends there or that, you know, in, in situations where you're trying to move things to the next step. And you got some dickhead hanging around trying to talk to you with his hands and just focus, oh, yeah, and you're looking at him. And you're like, fuck off, idiot. Like, aren't you getting the hint? Like, I'm trying to fucking pick up here. We're not going to do that fucking voluntarily. Casual, loose plans made usually the day of or the night before. If someone respects you and values your time, they're going to want to make sure you are penciling them in in advance. Okay, it's going to be a formal thing. Follow for more. If you match. See, this chick, once again, this is what girls do. Like, women flake hard. Like, guys, like in my monster hunting days, when I was out rampantly womanizing, banging chicks and all that, you may. Like, old, the flake rate of women is pretty fucking high. I would say it's. 50%, right? I sort of always have multiple options lined up um, when I was out um, and had time free. And I would then, once I knew someone was locked in, then I would move the other ones around, right? For exactly that reason. I would say most of the time, I'm sure I've heard guys doing it too. This show isn't about what guys do. This is what women do to with men and men's experiences with women who are dating. Guys in the comments, tell me how many times you've been fucking flaked on the last second. Like you'd be driving to the date and you get a text message, oh, my dog died or my fucking mum died or fucking my friend's boyfriend broke up with her. This is what I always used to get. Oh, my sister's my sister's boyfriend uh, broke up with her, so I've got to go over there and sit with her. I mean, how many fucking times does that happen? Well, the first time, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, no worries. The same time, the same bullshit fucking stories I got time after time. Um, was absolutely astonishing, right? So that's why men become even more <laughs> ruthless in the dating game because women flag, they don't hold to plans at all, guys. They don't get penciled in. Right? What I used to do by the end of it, right, when I was just that confident with it, is I'd make a date with a girl on a Monday for, say, a Friday, and I wouldn't talk to her the whole week, and I'd wait for her to come to me on the Friday and ask if it was still on or what because I hadn't contacted her all week. But if you're talking to women all week you're giving them more options to cancel plans on you or to get bored of you or not be so mystified by you and want to know more about you because she's learnt more about you through all the texting bullshit the whole week and then she goes off because she gets a better option she goes to somebody else it's just the way it goes all right guys halfway through if you're enjoying the content please subscribe i'm trying to get to 20 million subscribers as soon as possible so your support would be much appreciated on the channel oh this one right I've seen them now. I've done, now they've been doing this channel for a while now, guys. This girl pops up fucking everywhere on TikTok giving dating advice. Um, the, the most recent one was 
um, that I put up was like her saying how good she was because she had a boyfriend. But obviously, he's not around anymore. Here are three red flags to look out for in the very early stages of dating. First one or two dates. The first one, over idealization. Listen, I, I know you're amazing. You know you're amazing. But if somebody's going to come and tell you, oh my God, I've never met anyone like you and you're the most incredible person I've ever met. I feel this crazy connection. The, how the fuck do you want them to know that about you? You barely know each other. You've had one or two dates. Oftentimes, yes. it's the early signs of love bombing, which can be a manipulation tactic. So instead, just let them know, great, it's been fun to get to know you. I'm excited to see where things go. But hey, I move a little slower. I don't want to jump into things. So let's just get to know each other authentically and see where no, but the thing is, all right, you get these chicks that are in their 30s and they're on dating apps, and we know damn well that isn't what you do sitting around and being slow. We know you're fielding heaps of options with different guys and, and multi-dating. We know that. So what guys will sometimes try and do is tell women what they want to hear. I don't know about loving and wanting to get married. I don't know if that's an exaggeration or what. I've never heard of that. I've never done that. But guys, I sort of get a bit of a vibe for what women are wanting out of the, uh, the, the, the interaction you learn over time as a monster hunter. When you're going out with women, you make mistakes. Um, you know, you might tell them you're not interested in certain things and they drop you. So you learn, well, hang on, I'm going to lie about it because I still need to pursue these women to get what I want to get out of them, which is sex. And maybe, maybe if you do like them, there might be the, the chance of a relationship down the line. But we don't offer that up straight away, us monster hunters. No, we don't. We lie, uh, we manipulate to get what we want because we've learned from our previous experiences of being Mr. Nice Guy that Mr. Nice Guy doesn't win. You gotta play the game, you gotta play dirty if you wanna get what you want out of the interaction as well, guys. That's what she's talking about here because she's going and once again telling on herself that she's getting slammed and her back blown out and dropping neck on chads. And now she's starting to wise up a little bit. Well, hang on, these guys are being Mr. Perfect. Oh, or maybe they're not so perfect. <laughs> and see where it goes. Remember, setting a boundary is super important. That way, if this person's gonna continue to love bomb you and you say, ah, I'm not interested, you know that you're making that decision from a place of power for something that doesn't work for you. Two, monopolizing your social time. Again, I get it. It's so exciting when you meet somebody that you really like and you're like, oh my God, I wanna spend all my time with them. Oh, but that. again, you need to live your own fucking life. Yep. If somebody is trying to alienate you from your friends or is trying to get all their time with you, that can be an indication of possessiveness or a really unhealthy Yeah, your is pretty Again, negative with this one, isn't it? don't know this person. Alienation. So no, as tempting as it might be, you had one great date to spend every single day with each other. Bitter. That doesn't She's mean that it's going to lead to a relationship. On the contrary, you might just get really fucking hurt if you never hear from this person again, or they bounce off to somebody new. And the third one, selective listening. They remember specific things that you said about things that pertain to them. But when it comes to your boundaries and non-negotiables, hmm, all of a sudden, they just seem to have forgotten. Yeah, of course. It's the same if somebody's never asking questions about you. Oftentimes, it shows that they're self-centered and not really actually taking this more seriously. It's more about them than it is you. Oh, so you can tell this girl here, she has been dealing with some... Uh... Monster Hunters, that's for sure. She's been getting used and abused, and she's bitter, right? She's bitter. She's got the crazy eyes growing. Everything's a manipulation tactic, uh, alienation, manipulation, possessiveness. She's using all these sort of words. That comes from someone who is uh, very jaded uh, with men. Like, the reality is I've been through a lot of shit with women. All of my biggest problems in my life are due to women, like divorces and losing money and houses and friends and everything. It's because of women. But I don't hate women. I love women. I love women. I, I go, these women get bitter very, very easily uh, because they're not getting what they want, right? They're little princesses and they say, I want a relationship. I want a relationship. But do you want the man that you're in that relationship with? Most of the time, it's no. So, guys, you need to be careful. And I always say this. These women are hunting you. And monster hunters know this. And that's why we lie and get what we want out of them before we are a next target, before we are putting ourselves in a line of fire, putting our lives at risk, putting our financial security at risk with these women who are not worth it. All right, last video, I'm not gonna talk. Is this eating it again, all right? I can't help myself. Uh, I'm gonna put you guys through some pain, I guess. Let's listen to this last one, guys, and I'll, I'll close off the video there. Here is one of the biggest red flags in dating if you have never fucking met the person. If you guys are matching and you're Everything just having a quick little chat, on. because remember, we don't stay in the fucking talking phase too long, go out and meet somebody. You but if em. while you're getting to know each other, that person starts to get sexual or starts to send suggestive photos, abort fucking mission. I'll tell you what, like, I can just tell you from my experiences, like, I was never really one to send, um, you know, cock pics and all that sort of thing. Yeah, maybe when I was younger, I did that sort of thing a couple of times. But when I had girlfriends, not randoms off the internet. I have this funny story that I tell my mates. Like I was talking to this girl on Bumble and on, on, on inside the Bumble app, you can you can send photos. 
and she's talking to this really nice looking blonde girl uh, but she didn't have um I, I was just trying to think of a tactful way to see more of her body right and her photos they didn't show from like you know good angles her curves and stuff so i said to her i said oh could you just send me a full body shot i'd love to see more of you if that's okay you know i guess this 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 photo when i press the button there you know where you hold the button and you got to undo the preview or whatever you know where it's masked and it was her fucking doggy style right in front of a mirror with the camera back with fucking wet ass pussy just hanging out and i was like i thought like it was a good photo i had a good fucking look at it but that instantly put me off because I didn't even ask her for a sexy photo and she's showing me a fucking, you know, how, what she had for breakfast, right? So as much as I love that stuff, I was never one who wanted pics. Like, I didn't want pics. I wanted to go and just get the action. I didn't want fucking photos. I didn't want to talk about it. I wanted to go and do it. If you want a long-term relationship and you actually want something of depth, let me tell you, this is I not where you start. I'm a me, very me, me. intimate creature. I'm a very sexual creature. That is something that's super important to me, but that is fucking earned over time. That is not <laughs> something that we have discussed before we have even met. So if somebody's getting all sexy yeah, and time, texty and day. sexual and sending photos, if that is not what you want, do not continue to engage. You're only perpetuating that shit behavior. Yeah, do you think she's going to be a sexual creature when you're going out there for 12 months? Probably not. They all die down. A lot of these women, they come off and say, yeah, I'm a sexual creature, and they're fucking doing backflips on you, double anal, fisting, fucking rimming, giving you rim jobs, fucking deep throat, and you spit all over your cock, swallowing loads, whatever it is. And they're not doing that fucking six or 12 months later. Not when they get a little bit comfortable, guys. So those performances, uh, they, uh, they are stop. So keep an eye out for that. Women who are overtly sexual, doesn't stay that way. It's a sales tactic, boys, to lock men who don't know any better in monster hunters we take full advantage of it we go in we are filthy with them we have a great time we extract the best out of them the best performances out of them and we move on all right guys thanks for watching and once again if you haven't sub please sub like comment guys and i'll see you in the next one